Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. My name is Josh Newberger. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Utsi Newts North America, uh, joined by Shane Barco, uh, uh, who's up in uh, Canada right now. And we're gonna be walking, walking through our final Productivity is our product series. And this one is titled, It Sticks. Of course, uh, when you're dealing with it, adhesives, we always want them to stick. And uh, Shane has some very, very good tips for us and some, some different things walking through the Utsin, uh, Utsin adhesive range. And we're gonna kind of continue on. But before we do that, we always like to kick these things off just a little bit. And we wanna kind of walk through just our corporate history. And so first and foremost, you know, we have multiple brands within the Utsi Nuts North America uh, uh, subsidiary here in the U.S. And our global headquarters is actually in Ulm, Germany. We're fourth generation family owned, founded in 1911. And you can see our executive board there, Julian Utz, Heinz Lederboten, and Philip Utz, who make up our executive board. Um, and those are the folks that are that are in charge of Utsi Nuts uh, globally. And we do sell on a global scale all the way throughout uh, uh, the world into many different uh, uh, markets, but our main main focus of uh, of uh, products that we manufacture is all supply and flooring installation materials. So you can see that within the brand uh, or within the Utsi Nuts group, we have seven different brands. They're all listed down there below. And what those brands do is they actually represent some type of flooring installation material, whether that be rubber coatings or tile setting material or cleaning materials, or of course the ones that you're familiar with, uh, with Wolf Tools, Palman on the hardwood side, and of course the Utsin brand. All those different types of brands, all those brands represent the Utsin Uts group. And the, we all manufacture some type of flooring installation material which then leads to our various systems to help you be successful and help you be productive on your job site. A very, very quick history of the Utsi Nuts uh, group. In 1911, as mentioned before, the uh, Utsi brand was founded. And as it kind of progressed there and through the 20s, it actually started off as a shoe polish and laundry powder. And it was kind of through that and into the 1950s that the self-leveling powder started uh, to come about. And in 1948, the registration of the brand actually Utsin. That's kind of where everything started to kind of develop into this floor installation market. And then one thing that we always do bring up, and while the companies were not together quite at this point in time, Wolf Tools, which is a, which is a brand that goes hand in hand with Utsin, was actually founded in 1954. And again, the Utsin brand and the Wolf brand were not quite together at this point in time. As you see through the timeline here, um, and again, jumping between Utsin and, and Wolf, um, in 1955 is when the production of leveling and smoothing compounds in the Utsin brand started to develop in Ulm, Germany. And in 1972, at the, meet, at the same time in Ilsfeld, the first pat patent for the floor stripping machine was uh, was developed. So a lot of technology and a lot of history is built into the technology of the products that are being uh, put into the market. In 2002, then, you can see that Utsin and Wolf joined up, and that's where the Utsin Uts group acquired Wolf Tools and really kind of started to develop this, this umbrella that hosts all these different brands. In 2006, Utsin entered the North American flooring market, and uh, you can see that uh, we started to evolve. And as Utsin started to celebrate its 100-year anniversary in 2011, a few years later in 2015, we opened our, the first North American uh, manufacturing plant in Dover, Delaware. We have several uh, several products, uh, the powder products in the Utsin brand that are manufactured in Dover. And we are going to be uh, launching a new factory and new operational uh, manufacturing facility uh, very shortly. Hopefully in 2021, we'll be able to announce that location for you as well. Last year, uh, actually right around this time, we implemented what we call Passion 2025. And that is a five-year strategy. And, and the reason that we used the word Passion is that all the people that you'll find that work for the Utsi Nuts uh, organization, and that goes not only here in North America, but all the way across the world, are very, very passionate about the, the installation of, of flooring, whether that is their expertise of tile or removal on the wolf tool side. 
it, it is it is that passion that really brings our employees together and is that common bond of, of basically flooring that, that really brings us all together. And we are able to share that passion with our customers, whether it's our flooring installation customers or our distributor partners uh, alike. So that's just kind of a, a very, very brief uh, history into the uh, organization of uh, Utsi Nuts uh, Age. And with that, I would like to introduce Shane Barco, and he is uh, he is our our one of our territory managers up in Canada. Shane has a very very long history with adhesives. He's going to bring a lot of different interesting topics and it's some different theories as we go through out there. As a uh, quick administrative note before I turn it over to Shane, if you have any questions throughout the process or throughout uh, this webinar, there's a question box uh, down there. Type them in there, and then Shane and myself will go through them as as we uh, wrap up the uh, webinar. And with that, Shane, I uh, hope you're doing well. Welcome today, and thank you for joining us. A absolutely. Thank you, Josh. Uh, you did a great job on the company history, and thank you for doing that. I always struggle with that a little bit, but uh, um, without further ado, we'll get going here. Uh, my name is Shane Bartko, and um, like Josh said, I'm based in Canada. And um, we've had some very significant uh, success with uh, our European made adhesives. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, this first screen you see, the vinyl apocalypse, that was actually coined by one of our customers that were having a ton of problems with the, the, their adhesives that they were using at the time. And you know, it bears the question, is that a vinyl apocalypse that's happening? or as the industry just buried their heads in the sand and and just started to ignore the issues with with um, uh, current adhesives that are available on the market and the problems with uh, that come with that. So I, what I want to do is just show you a few uh, photographs here of um, installations, some residential, some commercial. Um, and as you can see here, this vinyl planks in front of some patio windows and the sun's uh, barreling in and, and you can see the, the difference in, in temperature and when the temperature rises, adhesive resin starts to flow and no longer, you know, it doesn't turn to water, but it's become soft and, and, and very malleable and, uh, and vinyl likes to expand and contract with environmental changes and you can see how it started to pull the planks right out of the resin as they grew and, and expanded. Here's another one. This is the Target store in New Jersey. And this is a common uh, thing that you'll see if you're, if you're in the flooring industry and you're walking with your head down, you'll see a lot of vinyl planks where they've opened up on the ends. And it's just because uh, vinyl plank um, is, is dimensionally unstable and it wants to shrink and expand and it's gonna shrink and expand on the longest edge. So obviously you're, you're, it's gonna to start to gap at the, uh, the ends of the planks uh, foremost. Here's another picture, and this is uh, taken in um, Alberta in some townhomes or there we, might be known as row housing in other parts of the world. And you can see after installation on the picture on the left-hand side, um, the floor was cooled down 15 degrees before below install. Or, or down to 41 degrees Fahrenheit, and it opened up almost an eighth of an inch. This is a quarter inch um, uh, tool that they had uh, laid next to it. On the other side, in, in, in a townhouse right beside it, the temporary heat was uh, turned up in the basement, and the it drove the heat up on the floor, and you can see how the, the planks expanded and created uh, some serious peaking and whatnot in it. And then when these floors cool down from expansion like that, there's gonna be gaps now because the vinyl plank has pushed itself away from itself everywhere on the floor and it's gonna create gapping in the width and the length. Here's another one, you can see it's a one millimeter gap and that, that translates into um, uh, roughly a 16th of an inch. And again, this is 99% of the time, this is just due to uh, expansion and contraction from environmental conditions and, um, and, and causing these gaps. So 
we have uh, currently we have four European made adhesives in North America. KE 2000S is a true multi-purpose um, adhesive that can glue down many different kinds of floor coverings, but predominantly vinyl and rubber. Um, KE 66 is uh, a very unique product to the marketplace. It's a polyvinyl acetate adhesive with a very, very hard um, resin when it cures. We now have KR430, which is a, a unique um, two component urethane, which is very, um, it's installer friendly for usability. And then we have um, Uzine WK222, which is our zero VOC contact cement. So it can be used in all kinds of um, um, how, um, occupied spaces, hospitals, seniors, complexes, schools, those sorts of things. And I'm not going to delve too deep into the data and, and, the, and, and the data sheets on each adhesive. I'm, I'm more focusing on the problems in the industry and what makes these um, adhesives different. Okay, so the big deal with uh, European adhesives is their shear strength the, and the resin hardness, and they kind of work hand in hand. And we've been able to significantly impact the flooring industry in, in Canada by um, utilizing these adhesives in the, in the proper situations. And there's also some uh, other goodies in there too, like fiber reinforcement and, uh, and high solids content. And most, most uh, North American adhesives, they do, a, they do a poor job of controlling shear. So we'll talk more about shear in a second, but the industry has gone to a situation where they're using releasable adhesives, which were technically uh, manufactured for uh, carpet tile, which is not as dimension and stable and or it just doesn't show it on the floor, okay? So it all boils down to the stopping the vinyl from moving in, in plane or laterally during expansion contraction events. So that's the temperature fluctuations. So as vinyl warms up, it wants to expand. When it cools, it wants to shrink. And it's most noticeable in luxury vinyl plank because of the dimensions of that, that product. Um, so that's what we're doing with the European adhesives is we're controlling the shear. We're controlling the expansion contraction of the vinyl plank. Um, some helpful uh, um, items during installation really become familiar because they are different adhesives and they react different to uh, how you install them. They don't take any more time to use them, but they're just a little bit different. So read and become familiar with the data sheets. Um, the project environmental conditions are always, they need to be consistent until these glues are set up according to our data sheets. So every adhesive on the market has a cure time. So try to adhere to that. And, you, and it might come down to, um, you might have to paper some windows off to stop the sunlight from, from um, um, reaching the uh, flooring until the adhesive sets up. Also, another good thing is to properly acclimate the flooring as per the manufacturer's installation instructions. And, and a key thing there is, is make sure that you pick the right adhesive for the right job. And what we mean by that is, is you could have a, a school and a big atrium with windows on the front, lots of sunlight coming in, and that might be where you want to use our KE66 adhesive. And then you can, in the corridors, classrooms, those sorts of things, you could use the KE2000S. So KE66 is a wet set only adhesive. Um, and we understand, you know, in the industry, it, it, it um, comes with a little bit more finesse when you're installing with it. And then you can go into our transitional adhesive, the 2000S. And 2000S can be used contact style. You can be used wet set. It can be used as, an, as a, a transitional adhesive. And then when you get into places with um, um, a vinyl plank and vinyl in areas that you're gonna have a lot of topical water, we have KR430, which is a two component urethane, which essentially is uh, waterproof and won't re-emulsify from, 
from uh, topical water. Um, and places like commercial kitchens, produce areas and grocery stores where they got the misters going all the time, locker rooms where they have showers off to the side, those sorts of things. And you can even use this, this adhesive in the showers themselves with safety floor when you're doing handicap uh, showers, okay? So there's a trend in the market now that we're trying to build so many features into one adhesive. And where I'm going with this is, you know, they're, they want to be able to glue the plank down, do a good job of that. They want to be moisture resistant and all those types of things as well. And in, in fact, we're building adhesives like a, like a multi-tool knife. They, they 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 don't really do a good job of any one thing right so where i'm going with that is oozine uh, internationally worldwide we believe in mitigating moisture in the in the in the concrete slab and then providing an adhesive that will do a very good job of controlling shear and those sorts of things so you can see here that this was a, a rubber sheet goods that was installed, had a lot of RH in the floor. It was a two component adhesive, which is waterproof and won't re-emulsify from water, but water still found a way to create bubbles and, uh, and like pimples all over the floor. So we just sliced into it in an inconspicuous spot and water just started rushing out of there. So, you know, the ad adhesives, are designed to be moisture resistant. They're not a mitigation system. Okay, so if you do both things, if you mitigate properly and you bond your flooring down, this is where the productivity as our product comes in. Your, a company can spend a lot of money on trying to rectify the situation, doing inspections, and a lot of times the contractor is left holding the bag with the dollars that, that, that they have to do to replace the, the, the floor covering because of expansion and contraction, possibly moisture problems, all those good things. So if you can see down at the bottom, you can see that if you use our adhesive, you'll get a, a 10 year limited warranty on that. And that includes material labor and subsequent floor prep. Um, if you look at adding uh, mitigation in with our adhesive or our adhesive and, and substrate prep products, you'll get the, the classic 10-year warranty plus 10 years. And that includes material labor and subsequent floor prep. And then the classic limited lifetime is, is based around a mitigation system that we have with, uh, and just reach out to your local Uzine reps to, uh, get in more information on the, on the warranty systems. So in the end, when you really use a really good adhesive and you're, you're bonding those floors down to con control the shear of the, of the floor coverings moving contraction and expansion, you're gonna need a floor covering removal machine to get those floor coverings out. And on the Wolf side of it, we have some really great removal machines and uh, I encourage you to reach out to your wolf representatives and they can talk to you more about that. And I think that's it, Josh. Or is there, uh, we, yeah. do we have any questions or? Oh, of course we do, of course we do. So uh, first and foremost, Shane, lots of very good information there. Um, could you, uh, one, of the, one of the questions that just kind of came in real quick was, you know, you touched a little bit on it, but environmental uh, surroundings during the installation process, this is, this is probably something that a lot of people overlook. And you brought up the, you know, the fact with the sunlight coming in and, you know, really kind of looking at all those diff different elements. Could you just kind of reinforce how, how critical is that, is that environment? Yeah, so, so. You know, like um, like unlike anybody's adhesive out there or or vinyl plank, they need to be acclimated to site. But if you have a lot of sunlight heat load coming through windows, 
even while you're installing the floor, that can be driving the temperature of the vinyl floor or rubber flooring up to a point where it starts to expand during the installation. And we even had a customer in, in Alberta here who was doing a school. And as he was installing the floor, he could actually see the, all the planks starting to peak uh, before the adhesive was even remotely set up. So that's where, you know, sometimes you got to do your due diligence and uh, try and control the situation. I know it's tough on job sites, but sometimes you might have to get some building paper or craft paper or something and just put it up in the windows to stop the sunlight from coming through. And that's kind of where I was going with that whole environmental thing. And it's, it's the same thing too, like if in air conditioned spaces, got to make sure that air conditions running and, and uh, it's not 90 degrees in the, in the house when you're installing and then, and then turn the, and then, and then turn the AC on to bring it down to 70, that's going to create problems too. So that's where um, the proper adhesive selection for something like that, you know, if you know you're going to be doing a multifamily project and you want to put down and you want to use an adhesive that's going to control the plank expansion contraction in, in heating and cooling events, then you're going to go to KE66 or KR430. Um, and they and do, they do a very good job of controlling planks expansion and contraction outside normal environmental conditions. Yeah, and it's very similar as you touched with the KR430. You know, if you have an area that is going to be um, really uh, prone to getting wet or lots of moisture, kitchens, out, you know, entryway, yeah. those types of things, you know, really making sure that that you're using the proper adhesive is is critical. And that's where like yeah. a KR430 would come in yeah. handy. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it, it, it is really critical. Like we, you know, it, the the whole industry when we first started putting LVP in, you know, a lot of vinyl sales reps were going around with with plungers, and they were like, "See, it's so easy to replace this plank," but they didn't count on the fact that vinyl really is a dimensionally unstable product, and the only way to get it to stop moving is to use a proper adhesive that can control that shear that's being forced upon it. The releasable adhesives that are on the market that they're installing vinyl with now were originally, in, really, were really, really uh, um, manufactured to to control or glue down carpet tile. In yeah. The beginning. And they yeah. just kind of morphed into this vinyl plank and vinyl tile. Yeah. Yeah. And it's exactly. created a lot of problems mm -hmm. in the industry. Uh, fiber reinforcement, uh, common in adhesives? Not common at all. I, I, I know of one and it's KE66. So that, um, that ha plays a twofold um, uh, job on, uh, in the adhesive. So the first, first situation is it, it helps control the planks from sliding around during installation. Um, after about being in the glue for 15 minutes, it's very difficult, very difficult to get a plank to slide on the floor. So that's the fiber that's helping with that. And then the the second portion of that is is the uh, fiber is actually act, acting as like reinforcement rods and adhesive to help control shearing. Yeah. In the, in the shearing action. So you know we we actually uh, you can use. Um, uh, KE66 in, in three season rooms in buildings that you're going to turn the heat out in the winter like a cottage and you want to come back and you want your vinyl plank to still be on the floor. KE66 is is very good at controlling uh, vinyl outside of the normal environmental conditions. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I totally hear that. Um, Going to jump to KR430, and then we got a question back to 2066. But can KR430 yeah. uh, can that be used to bond flooring to galvanized metal or any type of metals? Yeah, if it's if the metal is properly prepared, and what I mean by that is um, you got to always degrease metals before you start bonding things to them. But certainly KR430 can be used to bond um, vinyl. And rubber to, or or even carpet for that matter, to mm -hmm. metal and those sorts of things. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, let's jump to a uh, question here. You touched on a little bit, you know, gapping and shrinking, no doubt, one of the biggest issues with LVT. Yeah. yeah. Does KE2 or does uh, 2000S and KE66, does that eliminate or really minimize those two issues? And then any other adhesives that you kind of see out there that work well at controlling the gapping? I mean, KR430, no doubt. I mean, that's a yeah. that's a, yeah. like a rock solid. Um, yeah, so KE66, it really gives you an epoxy style bond mm -hmm. to the substrate. So you're you're essentially welding your your floor covering to the substrate. KE2000S, it also is a 70% solids product with a, a and it and it has a really high shear strength too, and that's through um, film hardness. And if you're talking to some of your Uzine reps, um, I can show them a, a really neat uh, presentation that they can show you how the different uh, resins uh, perform under, uh, um, you know, a resin softness hardness test. It's actually really cool. So ask them about it, and they can bring that around and uh, show it to you. Yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, another one. You know, you kind of touched on this, uh, Ke. Just, but let's just refresh on this, Ke sixty six used on all substrates, most substrates, uh, really, really, I mean, uh, you know, KU66 really just closes the gap on so many different things. And I don't want to say it's an a underutilized adhesive in our range, but it's one that we sometimes probably don't talk enough about is probably the better way to talk. Yeah, to yeah, it's the, it's really the unsung hero of our product line. It, um, you know, in Europe, most of the installers over there, even in, in Britain and UK, they don't use anything else but KE66 because they have zero issues with these things that we're talking about. But the one thing with KE66, and it's it's like any other wet set adhesive, you have to have a porous substrate. So whether the concrete is porous, whether... Um, you use plywood or, or rated underlayments for those sorts of things to, to achieve that. You can use our leveling compounds and patching compounds to create porosity, but you always should test for porosity. We're doing a hospital right now in Calgary. Uh, it's a really big project and all the concrete is coming out non-porous. So they have to make sure that you deal with that substrate and create porosity and Usually our, our levelers are a great way at three millimeters to create a really good porous substrate that is even throughout the floor. So the, what I mean by that is, is um, if you're familiar with putting adhesive down on concrete, sometimes there's areas that, hey man, this stuff's not curing out properly on in certain areas on the floor. You can see it drying when you're using a pressure sensitive adhesive and some areas are taking way longer. That's because the concrete's porous and non-porous in certain areas. And that's what our levelers do is a really good job of creating porous, even porosity over the entire project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, question here, all the adhesives that you just went through, Shane, can we use those right to PE460? Some of them you can. So one would be 2000S in, mm -hmm. in transition mode and, and uh, in transition and, and, and getting into pressure sensitive area. Like it would be just like installing um, floor coverings on our, our R185, very similar. Right. Also you can use KR430 to install directly to PE460. And as well, you could use it, um, you could use WK222 as well. Mm. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, can KE66 be used to adhere to floor covering or under bed instead of like an epoxy adhesive? Uh, oh, yes. So in hospitals, there's a, usually a requirement in a lot of them where they have the big hospital beds that are super heavy with small wheels on them mm -hmm. that, yeah. a, that a two component adhesive is used. But KE66 is rated for those Helron beds and is a single component adhesive. It really speeds up the project when you're using something like that. 
Yeah, yeah. So like those operating rooms and so forth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Or anywhere that you're going to get heavy cartwheel traffic, you know, like um, um, Grocery mail store. depots and that, where they got big bins rolling around, and, and you want the floor covering to indent and yep. see roller traffic there. That's where you could KE66 will shine in those situations. And there's a lot of grocery stores out there that you'll see in produce, produce areas. They'll have LVT or, or you know, some other type of floor covering uh, transitioning, maybe from a polished concrete or something like that. So yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, I in, in Shane, I don't know if you know this one, but is there a universally recognized method to really measure shear strength in adhesive? And my guess is that you know it really kind of depends upon the material that you're putting down to length width etc yeah in north america there really isn't anything that's recognized for shear strength because it really hasn't been something that we've done in north america i know in europe they've they have some iso din uh numbers that they have to meet and they do we do test for it in our in our labs in germany so if there's something that uh, a big project requires some kind of a shear strength for adhesives, we can we can have that floor covering tested and and uh, and written into the specification for that project. Yeah, and you touched on a very good point. I mean, that's one of the one of the things that Utsin really does. We offer more, we offer more systems, but we really do offer more technical expertise, and we're more than happy to be extremely project specific. You saw Shane talk about it, especially with our warranties, our plus ten warranty, and we really, really are, want to be there and be your partner. And and so, if there's ever any questions on a specific project floor covering, anything like that, we're more than happy to come out and, and uh, talk with you guys with it, so. Yeah, and, and absolutely, and I, I really encourage you to reach out to your uh, local Uzine reps and uh, pick up a pail of one of our adhesives. You know, um, we, in, in Canada, we sell a lot of KE2000S. Um, it's probably 80% of the projects is, is, it's our workhorse in our adhesive line. Then KE66 and 430 because they're more of a specialty product, mm -hmm. but uh, you you know you really gotta fit the right adhesive for the right project and and everybody likes uh, projects with no issues, right? So that's where we're that's where we're headed with all these European adhesives is, <clears throat> and that's our productivity is our product with them is is that there's no after after project calls and and all those costs associated with it. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head there, Shane. I mean, that is one of the one of the beauties of the the Utsin line, the Wolf line, even our Palman line, is that the products themselves. We always say the products are the heroes, and and there, it couldn't be it couldn't be more true. Just in the sense that that we really try to produce very innovative quality products that help you on your job site, make your life easier or more yeah. productive, as as we said. Got a got a last question here. It looks like. Um, KE66 versus epoxy adhesive. Easier to apply um, are we, as, as coming from a little bit of a wood background, I always remember the old urethanes uh, spreading those. You'd always call them, you know, pop, you would always call those arm curl uh, trollable adhesives. How are we looking with the KE66 versus epoxy adhesives in your- Yeah, KE66 is, um, uh, is very user friendly. It's just like troweling a, a typical wet set adhesive. It trowels mm -hmm. out very nice um, and holds its ridges really well. And and that saying, um, um, our KR432 component polyurethane, if you have a project that's going, I highly encourage you to try that because there's nothing else that I've found in North America like it as far as, as the trowel ability and the workability, it holds its ridges. A lot of these two component epoxies and urethanes out there, they just sort of slough off and and just turn into a pool on the floor. So I, you know, it, it and, that, and that's why they're not that prevalent because because they've been so hard to work with in the past. But these these new this new KR430 for us is a it's a beautiful product, and I encourage you to try it. Yeah, it even starts with the packaging itself too, Shane. I mean, just even yeah. op opening the packaging and looking at it, how we're mixing the part A to part B or one to two there. 
I mean, it's it's a it's a wonderful presentation just to start with, and then again, as Shane mentioned, the trialability, the ridge forming, the ability to take that KR430 and really apply it to multiple different avenues from from kitchen areas to hospitals, lots of caster wheels, you know, any type of uh, any type of uh, floor covering that's going to see that pivot point with caster wheels. And and Shane, correct me if I'm wrong. I I, I, I I know this is the case. We don't see it often, but you can even use KR430 on uh, astro, not astro turf, but field turf as well. And, and rubber yes, yeah, or- yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can use it on on field turf and uh, and various, and it's rated for exterior use. And it's it's a really unique product. It's it's excellent. The one thing I wanted to touch on too, Josh, before we go, is that. Um, there's another phenomenon that's happening in the industry now where um, the final manufacturers are having to change their formulas for their um, their floor coverings because of all the eco-friendly things that are going on and they're taking phthalates out of them and they're changing the recipes but nobody seems to be chain- going with them hand in hand with adhesives and Uzine has done a very good job of of doing that and testing all these new types of materials that are coming out and we have uh, a system called the the rag program which is the recommended adhesive guide that um, um, you can look up and see which one of our adhesives that we uh, promote for each specific um, type of new type of floor covering that's out there Mm-hmm. It's very important because they're they 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 put a lot more stress on the old old style adhesives, and um, they're not performing like they used to. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, a couple more uh, questions start rolling in here, uh, and okay. and I'm gonna combine them together real quick. Uh, one is there still a lot of epoxy adhesives that you're seeing out there, whether that's in Canada, Shane, or just you know in in North America in general. And then what type of, we're going to go jump back to the KR430. What type of projects would you use the KR430 for if you're going to, when using it over like other adhesives? Well, um, okay. So let's start with the first question. Yeah, we still see um, a lot of two component adhesives being used in seniors complexes because they're doing handicapped showers and they're using safety floors. Mm-hmm. for the for the shower base so that's really a, a the land of two component adhesives you see it in hospitals a lot i would say that 20 to 30 percent of the floor covering that goes down in hospitals is typically a two component adhesive um, commercial kitchens really should be if you use like a safety floor uh PVC sheet good and you use um, a two component adhesive with heat welding, that floor is now waterproof. It's not gonna allow all that water that collects around the drains and stuff to get underneath and re-emulsify the adhesive. And then if you tie our our new patch, the NC890 in, now you have like a a system there that the water is not gonna um, re-emulsify the patch either. So you've got a belt suspender system there. That's uh, really going to take care of any issues. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then and then the second this what was the second question there again? Yeah, sorry, Josh? I kind of combined them. But what kind of projects would you use the KR430 for when using it over over the other adhesives? And we kind of touched on that a little bit. So so yeah, why? it's any you know like um, like like um, um, regrind rubber sport flooring or sport flooring up to ten millimeters um or yeah i believe it's 10 millimeters and then um again commercial kitchens hospitals any place that there's a a high demand on the floor covering for indentation resistance and or if there's going to be some really high demand on environmental um changes as far as temperature fluctuations and that sort of thing so it's going to put a lot of stress on the floor covering um it's a great place to use a two component adhesive. Right. Right. Hey, one thing we really did not touch on and, and a question just kind of came in, uh, you know, 
2000 S and 66. Let's talk a little bit about the VOCs on that, and and uh, really, I mean, some of the lowest out there. Yeah, they're uh, they're actually extremely low, um, and they've been originally they were built around the Blue Angel system, and they're still Blue Angel certified, which is a, a European um, designation. But in North America, we tend to um, we kind of beat to the drum of lead projects mm -hmm. so we have all this all the berkeley analytical testing done certificates for those adhesives and they pass all of that those stringent um environmental regulations that are put in place with lead projects and and also so C, i believe it's the cpdh california protection uh mm -hmm. department of health mm -hmm. so yeah no we we uh they're they're uh Really, all three, four of those adhesives are very low odor. Um, you can use them in any occupied building and not have any issues at all. That's good. Yeah. Um, third party testing with adhesives. Uh, we do a lot of third party third party testing, especially when it comes to our our levelers and of course our patch. Uh, anything on adhesives here that that you? Yeah, that would be that would be the Berkeley analytical testing. Mm -hmm is um is our third party testing there because it's all about the environmental impact of adhesives and mostly uh um you know smells and aroma coming off and you know is there any harmful um, um vocs in the product itself so that's what where where our third party testing comes in with those is those those berkeley analytical certificates yeah yeah for sure a uh, couple more questions here. Is there any of our any of the Utsin glues that we can install for or that we can use for install of rubber treads? Yes, we we on a regular basis we use um, KE two thousand S, but you can use um, in a demanding situation. I would maybe notch that up and use KR four thirty. Mm -hmm. It's a, a you know in a high school or something like that where you've got tons and tons of traffic going up and down stairs. It's always a good idea to do belt and suspenders when it comes to that. But yeah. in uh, in just a regular commercial building um, where there's not going to be a lot of traffic, but the stairwells are all done, uh, KE two thousand S works fabulous for that. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the moisture? Uh, sorry. Just trying to make sure I'm reading this correctly here. Uh, what is the moisture, I guess, re residuals of KE66 after it's set or cured? Or how much? Yeah, how much moisture vapor, basically? Let's or uh, RA. What's the, what it can handle for moisture vapor, or? Yep, after it's set or cured. Yeah, so K KE66 is 80% RH. Mm -hmm. And that boils back down to the part of my talk there where we talked about, you know, how high moisture to tolerant adhesives, you know, you're giving to get something like that, you're giving up something. And that is sheer strength and bond and, and, and controlling the movement of the vinyl. So that boils back to, you know, take care of the, the moisture problem first mm -hmm. and then use the proper adhesive to control the vinyl that's on the floor or the rubber right it, it's imperative to do that it comes you know like wa water will find a way and we're starting to see these high moisture adhesives are starting to have these bubbling problems and, and water collecting underneath them and that sort of thing yeah yeah cool cool yeah uh one last question here looks like um and I know sometimes typing, I'm, I don't know if this is going to come across or if you can see the questions there. Uh, what adhesives or why adhesives that can be used with a product? What adhesives can be used with a product uh, with an attached IXP e pad? So, so. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to say with those attached pads, what the best case scenario would be is to um, just reach out to our technical department. We've done a, quite a bit of testing with a lot of those IXPE pads and um, 2000 generally works really well. 
but um, it's good just to reach out and 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 chat with our technical department or our technical sales reps, and we'll get you that information that you require for the for your that particular project. Cool, cool. All right. Well, Shane, it looks like uh, we've gone through the whole the whole gamut of questions. There's certainly lots and lots of good information. We really do appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, last thoughts, comments, anything, Shane? No, I think I think we touched base on that. I just I just wanted to make sure that everybody, you know, our philosophy on 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 adhesives and moisture mitigation are that people understand why we're doing that. Mm. You know that that there's there's a lot of demand put on these floor coverings to perform and even aesthetically pleasing that you know to keep make sure these things that this vinyl's not moving and the rubber's not moving and it's not creating headaches for you and and keeps your company productive mm -hmm. you know the last thing you need is to be sending the stallers back ripping out floor coverings and uh and fixing them because they're, they're moving around the floor and it's just it's just not you know they'll still perform but it's not as the customer never paid for gaps so you know let's let's do the right thing and put the right adhesive down for it yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, it's very good. Very good thoughts there. So um, with that, we're going to conclude the webinar. We certainly appreciate everybody's time. Thank you for joining us today. A copy of this recording will be placed on our website and stay tuned. Look for more uh, more webinar series, uh, productivity series uh, topics as we jump into 2021. And this is certainly something that we're we're going to keep continuing. We hope everybody has a, a wonderful holiday. Happy New Year. Stay safe out there. And if there's any questions at all, please do not hesitate to, to reach out to us. We're here to help you. Thank you and have a great day. Yep. Thanks, guys. Appreciate all your help. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Happy holidays.